The title of today's Brandon's blog is Can a Licensed Insolvency Trustee Near Me or Elsewhere Pooch Out of Essential Duties? This is a very interesting decision of the Court of Appeal for Ontario on a leave to appeal motion from the lower court decision. And what this decision confirms is what Brandon and I always have believed, that the court is not going to excuse its officer from performing the most basic of its duties. My name is Ira Smith, president of Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. Both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions you may have either about this Brandon's blog or anything else at all. So shoot us a message, give us a phone call. We would love to speak with you. I hope you can watch until the end of this video because I know you will find it informative. The brand first discusses what a licensed insolvency trustee is, how it's relatively easy to find one. Brandon discusses that licensed insolvency trustees are the only federally regulated debt professionals so that consistent standards and supervision throughout Canada are met. Brandon then talks about how licensed insolvency trustees relieve your burden of facing your creditors, phone calls and collection calls, because once you enter an insolvency process, the licensed insolvency trustee takes that burden off of you because now we communicate with your creditors, not you. Brandon then discusses some fairly simple ways that you can find a licensed insolvency trustee near you and then gives you some practical tips on how to determine which one you should choose to help you if you have, or your company has, debt problems. Brandon then discusses how does a licensed insolvency trustee get paid? And then Brandon gets into the case. And what this case is, is that a trustee under a restructuring proposal of a company, a company that operated 40 hair salons, had a major fight with what I presume is their major supplier out of the United States. And that litigation was ongoing in New Jersey. And the proposal trustee went to court and ask the court to relieve it from its most basic duty of evaluating the proof of claim filed by that creditor so that the company could continue the litigation in New Jersey and then the trustee could rely on the outcome of that litigation. Now on the surface, that may not seem unreasonable, but the company is actually choosing very expensive litigation in the United States, and the decision could be subject to appeal, which would only add more layers of cost and delay, rather than the trustee trying to value the claim of that major creditor. It doesn't make sense. The trustee could look at all the claims and cross claims and come up with a realistic number and then the company could sit down with that creditor and say, we're prepared to agree to allow you a claim of X dollars, but in return, we want you to vote in favor of our restructuring proposal. And that would end it. But instead, the proposal trustee went to court. The lower court said, we don't have the authority to relieve you of this most basic duty. And even if we did, we're not convinced that it is more economical 
to resolve the issue in costly litigation in New Jersey rather than the trustee attempting to value the claim in the Canadian proposal proceedings. The trustee and the company were not happy with this, so they appealed the lower court's decision to the Court of Appeal for Ontario. They sought leave to appeal. And the Court of Appeal for Ontario said the judge's decision was a just one and a wise one, and it cannot be assailed. You do not have a prima facie case here. You will not succeed. And they denied the leave to appeal. So what the Court of Appeal for Ontario confirmed, which is something that Brandon and I always believed, is that the court will not excuse its officer from performing its most basic duties. So I hope you can read the entire Brandon's blog below because I know you will get value from it. Again, both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions you may have, either about this Brandon's blog or anything else at all. So shoot us a message, give us a phone call. We would love to speak with you.